Gwen Jorgensen, the, Olymp the reigning Olympic triathlon champion. This is her first 10K since 2009, which she also ran on this track. Race. Let's go over the start list really quick. Carson Schweizer of Missouri, Rachel Johnson of ASICS from an elite, Megan Cunningham of Missouri, Gladys Tejada Buharanga of uh, Peru, Alice Wright of New Mexico, Liz Westfall of Nike, Misaki Hayashida of Toyota, Carrie Dimoff of Bowerman Track Club, Sharon Lokitty of Kansas, Natalie Tanner of Strava TC, Cleo Boyd of Roots Running Project, Melitza Merchiva of Florida State, Paige Stoner of Syracuse, Annie Frisbee of Iowa State, Grace McConaughey of Boise State, Caroline Kurgott of Alaska Anchorage, Carmela Cardama Baez of Oregon, Samantha Nadel of Oregon, Katie Rainsberger of Oregon, Danielle Shanahan, Jillian Shriver, and JC Smith of Air Force. Uh, so that's Aaron Teshuk of ASIC Sperman Elite out front, setting the pace. We saw her earlier tonight in the 1500. And here is your field. And tucked right in behind her are our two main women, Chris Schreiser and Setting the pace Jorgensen. for the field is Aaron Teshuk. ASIC Sperman Elite, and it's Carissa Schweitzer. Five-time All-American of Missouri making her 10K debut. 77 on that opening lap. So 77 opening lap. And actually right there in third right now, well, second behind the pacer, uh, Carrie Dimoff of Bowerman, setting the pace. who I believe is a marathoner. Uh, but Gwen Jorgensen, she represented ASICS while she was mm -hmm. a triathlete. Uh, and she moved to Portland from Florida, uh, as, as ostensibly to train with the Bowerman Track Club, but uh, she hasn't officially announced it. Today, she's outfitted in full Bowerman regalia. <laughs> so if this isn't an announcement, I don't know this. <laughs> we, we can uh, infer from that. Again, Chris Pfizer right there in second so far behind our pace setter. Alice right of New Mexico, tucked in right behind Gwen. You also see Rachel Johnson right in there. Swiper, and then it's Dimoff. And Jorgensen, Gwen Jorgensen, the All-American from Wisconsin, the 2016 Olympic triathlon champion. And she is in the process of switching over to the marathon, and she's running the 10K here of an outstanding field at the Stanford Invite. But again, Carissa Schweizer right now in Point second two. behind our pace setter. And Dimoff. And then it's Alice Wright of New Mexico. So They're behind the pace setter, Aaron Tesla. 311 uh, through 1,200 meters. So they're not exactly taking it easy up to this point. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, almost every time Carissa Schweizer yep. stepped on track recently, uh, the NCAA the record's in danger. Uh, and so when I heard that she was entering the 10K, I thought this was no different. Uh, last year, Anna Lohr, uh, the Notre Dame, ran uh, 32.58, I believe, here. Um, and then we got Liz Which West at the time was the eighth Houston fastest Boston mark. College anyway, running for Nike. Locati of Kansas. Sorry, 3158. Right um, so I could potentially see this crowd going. 77, eight through that lap. Mid 31s. Uh, the, the collegiate pace. record Chris isn't out of the, the question, depending on how the, the racing goes. Making her 10K debut tonight. Collegiate record is 3118. So Olympic keep that gold medalist in the triathlon. Right there behind Schweitzer. Again, women's 10,000 Invitational That's here at the 2018 Stanford Invitational. 
Jim Hoff of the Bowerman Track Club. They're the lead pack of seven, being, having their pace set by Aaron Teshik. So the lead pack has separated. We're looking at three distinct path, packs with one interspaced straggler at this point. And we've got 21 to go. Teshik setting the pace, and it's Weinstein, Jorgensen, Gimoff, and Wright. Lib Westfall, Rachel Johnson, Locady of uh, Kansas. Locady, a two-time Big 12 champion of 10K. Again, tries her right behind the pace setter right there, number one. And leading that chase pack. Gladys Tiana of Peru, two-time Olympian in the marathon for Peru. Megan Cunningham of Missouri to that lead pack. Okay, okay, 75 pack seconds through, through that last lap. That was 505 through the 1600. Here are your leaders. Aaron Teshuk sets the pace. So 505 pace uh, projects them at 31-35. Rachel Johnson, locating, and Westfall, 20 to go. Leading the chase pack, that's Megan Cunningham. One laps the to go. The indoor 5K champion. 624 at 2,000. Sorry, that's projected pace of 31.46. So Schweizer, Jorgensen. And then Dimoff and right now. Changes up front. Teshek. That's the pace. Pesic, of course, our pace setter in this race. That is Carissa Schweitzer of Missouri. Schweitzer, followed by Jorgensen, Corey Dimoff, and Alice Wright. Lord Westfall, Sharon Mulcahy. Rachel Johnson in that lead pack as well. 75-6 for that last quarter. So a little faster. And Shannon Malone leading the chase pack. Teshuk, Schweizer, Jorgensen, Dimoff, Wright, Johnson, Locady, Westerhall. Teshuk sets the pace. And we've got a group of six. Single file behind her. Liv Westfall working hard to join that group again. So perspective, uh, 3146 would be the sixth fastest 10K in collegiate history. The collegiate record is 3118, which Lisa Ole of Iowa State set in 2010. Well, that's due to fall. Why not tonight? Yeah, here come your leader. And they are approaching the nine-minute mark. They'll have 18 to go. So they've slowed a little bit to uh, 31.56 projected pace. Missouri is our race leader behind the pacer, Aaron Teshik. Although, with women like Schweizer and Jorgensen in this field, 78 nine on I see them picking lap. it up in these last few miles rather than slowing down. And I think they'll certainly be well under 32 Teshik, minutes. Schweitzer, Jorgensen, Dimoff, Wright, Johnson, Locady. Westfall. Uh, 
Uh, for those who don't know that much about Gwen Jorgensen, another amazing part of her story is that in addition to turning her focus from the triathlon to the marathon, no she said that she wants to do and win gold in 2020 in Tokyo. Um, she also gave birth to her first child uh, this past August and has made an amazing running comeback. Uh, I mean, you know, just just a few months ago, she ran 15-15 for 5K, which is an astounding time for anybody, <laughs> much less someone who gave birth a few months ago. Right. And now she here, here she is looking prepared to run under 32 minutes for 10K. Yeah, she doesn't look like she's straining the slightest right now. Teshuk, Schweitzer, Jorgensen, Dimoff, Wright, Johnson, Locati, Westfall. Cross country. Two in the indoor 5K, one in the outdoor 5K, and one in the indoor 3K. How long do you think Teshuk will go as the pace setter? That's a good question. Um, this is our first 10K of the night, so I'm not sure what the precedent is. Past the 11 minute mark. Teshik still out there setting the pace. Weitzer, Jorgensen, Jim Off. I think we're going to see Teshik step off here, and she does. So 16 laps to go. This is where Tessrick says she's had enough. And now, and Schweitzer now and Jorgensen are our two lead runners. That's right. Uh, 77 the split for that last lap, and it looks like We've they're a, a 32 six. flat pace. So if Schweitzer wants a chance to Sharon get on that collegiate all-time list, <laughs> they're going to have to pick it up a little bit. they got to start burning. And... Megan Cunningham leaving that chase pass. We see Dimoff in there, and also Alice Wright, Rachel Johnson. Schweitzer again looking strong in the lead here as they make their way back towards the first turn. That was 78. So they're, they're kind of losing track of that early, early <laughs> pace. Schweitzer, Jorgensen, Dimoff, Wright. Williams, Johnson after that. Gwen Jorgensen, the Olympic gold medalist in the triathlon. Gary Dimoff. Their 3205 pace. Schweitzer, Jorgensen, Dimoff, Wright, Johnson, and Locati. Whites are still and looking like she's settled back. in. Her yeah, uh, no one, no one's super eager to, you know, Here push it any going. faster than this. <laughs> it's not easy. And right. Especially when you, you see you have 14 Lopini. laps left to go. Right. Um, so a little more info on on Dimoff, who's currently running in third. Uh, the 34-year-old. Uh, has mostly transitioned to the roads. Uh, her last 10K 
Her 10K PB is from 2015. She ran 32.46 at Stanford. Um, but if she if she sticks with this group, she's going to break that PB by a lot. Good 45 seconds. With Carissa Schweitzer up front. And through 4,400 meters, they're on 32.07 pace. So still just Megan Cunningham starting to lag Missouri a little bit. Leading that chase pack and her teammate, At one point, do you field. think that if you're a runner and the slower pace isn't paying to your strengths, do you have to take it out and start doing things your way and take the lead in a race like this? Uh, Ten laps left, or do you do it now? Or yeah, well, a race like this, they're really they're all right running for time. Jordan. They're here to, to all run a fast time. Um, they're not necessarily trying to win. Um, I think that's secondary. Thirteen to go. And I, I think the the rate the pace is tough enough to where there's not much room to pass Schweizer and mm -hmm. make it harder. <laughs> I'm surprised, honestly, that there's still so many women in it. I mean, it's hard to say. It's hard to say from the get-go uh, how, how good Schweizer and Jorgensen would be at this distance. Although, actually, it looks like Jorgensen's getting a little right. tired of it. So maybe this answers Jorgensen your question. The the <laughs> at <point>. lap, <laughs> with 13 laps to go, she's ready. 16.04. So she is taking point. matters into her own hands. And taking the lead. So Jorgensen now out in front. Jorgensen and Schweitzer, Schweitzer Dimoff and right. Johnson Dimoff and right. Locati. Johnson, Locati. Cunningham continues to lead the chase pack. And that was a 77 for their last uh, quarter. So the I'm curious to see how it we'll the jets up from here. 1604. Uh, 12 to go. Win Jorgensen. An outstanding collegiate career at Wisconsin. And Jorgensen motoring her way through. And, won the Olympic gold medal in Brazil. and it looks now like she has picked things up slightly. We'll probably have to wait for another full lap to see the effect. 77 flat on that lap. Jorgensen. We see Jorgensen, Schweitzer, Demoff, Wright, Johnson, and Locati. So that was a 75 second lap for Jorgensen. Uh, the pace is projected pace, projected finish time now back down to 32.03. So this is starting to inject a little more energy <laughs> into things. Well, although Jorgensen is leading that lead pack, the lead pack is all right there. There hasn't really been a great deal of separation. It's just kind of a, a game of follow the leader between six women right now. Yeah. And this lead group, very consistent, right at 77 seconds each lap. And the distance between each one of these athletes has not changed for many laps here. Jorgensen leading the way right now. You're in the Schweizer, women's 10,000 meter right. invitational and, and the 2018 Stanford Invitational. 76-6, they were at 18 flat with 11 laps left. And, and Jorgensen's PR in this event is a 33-38. So she could, I mean, she could beat it by a minute and a half. Yeah. Easy. <laughs> and that's if they don't pick it up anymore. Yeah, right now it's looking like 32.05. So even that would be a 90-second PB. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be a good day at work for her. Jorgensen, Schweitzer, and Demoff. A bit of Jorgensen has now on the other three, which is Wright, Johnson, and Locati. Shown no great aggressive move since taking the lead, but she did take the lead about a lap ago, and lap and a half ago. And you, you can track. see there is uh, separation minutes. now Jorgensen. in that top group. There are our top three. And, and in certain With camera angles, go. you can't really see it, uh, but the top three, there's definitely a good six meter, almost 10 meter gap building. Yeah. Jorgensen pushing the pace, Schweitzer and Demoff covering at this point with 10 laps remaining. 
74 eight for that last lap. That's the fastest we've heard in a while. So Jorgensen has ticked up the intensity here. Jorgensen, the veteran. They're on 3201 pace through the 6K. Johnson, Sharon Locati round out the top six. We've so got Jorgensen, to go. Gwen Jorgensen Schreiser, is your leader. And Dimoff right now, Georgia one, two, three Schweitzer, here. They've third. stretched that gap to maybe almost 20 meters lap. by now. Uh, it looks the like a 76. Still on 32 flat pace. I feel like that's a barrier. You know, coming into this, weren't sure how fast they'd go. Uh, but now with about two miles left, they've been teetering on that 32 minute barrier. Uh, they were lagging a little bit, it's getting towards 32.10. Uh, and I think to get into the 30 rounds would be a good, good showing. Gives us something to root for. <laughs> Well, it's interesting to see if, if, if Dimoff here is going to be able to keep up with our top two as she looks a little bit more fatigued at this point than she did just a lap ago. So the increased pace of Jorgensen might be having its effect so far on that lead pack of three may soon become a lead pack of two. They've got 3,200 meters to go. Eight laps remain. Gwen Jorgensen, the veteran, Schweitzer in her 10K debut. Jorgensen, Schweitzer, and him off right now, one, two, three. And we're seeing a little bit more spacing between those lead three now. And Dimoff fighting to make sure it stays a lead three. Schweitzer. Not just a lead two. Off, one, two, and three. But she is falling off a little bit slowly over each lap. Right, Johnson and Locati. Right off is actually a former steeplechaser. So they all have different strengths here, our top three women. And Dimoff and Jorgensen are also both almost or more than 10 years older than Schweizer. That's a good point. And now they're coming up Georgia's on big packs of women who have to figure out how to navigate the passing. And it, it looked to me like Jorgensen kind of ran to the to side, go. looked at Schweizer and almost signaled her like, hey, your turn. Your turn, yeah. <laughs> there was not a uh, dramatic lead change. Lap. It was just a relinquishing of place. So they must have spoken earlier about maybe working together for some White of these labs and record holder in making sure they both get a fast time. Number five on the all-time collegiate list. The uh, right now they're on 3158 pace. Which so it's is, creeping which is, back down. Yeah, that's what Anna Rohr ran right at to win last year. Pace. Something under 32 would put them in the top 10 all-time collegiately for Schweitzer. Schweitzer, Jorgensen, and Dimoff. And it's right and located. So you see Schweitzer, Jorgensen, and Dimoff making their way past other packs. That's J.C. Smith back there with the 14 bib. Here come your leaders. The Schweitzer You're once again powering well ahead. Schweitzer, and she looks Gary good. Dimoff. And I thought Dimoff was going to drop off, but she hasn't. Yeah. 
You can, they just ran past us uh, from where, where we're 77 sitting. 77 flat on that lap. In the press box. And Schweitzer, the collegiate they definitely look like there's a little more Wendy energy. Wendy Jorgensen, uh, the Olympic the triathlon champion. The a little bit more. Running for Nike in the Bowerman you know, Track Club. Schweizer at the end of the race, which just kind of does this claw thing. Where she's, the with her hands are just clawing for the finish, and <laughs> she's definitely not there. You know, she she looks very in control. It probably doesn't feel comfortable, but she looks no. comfortable. <laughs> no, but she's very relaxed, loose uh, throughout her face and her upper body. No t clenching, no tightening. And that's exactly what a, what a coach wants to see. It looks rhythmic at this point, which is. That, that, that's a good thing to see as opposed to the herky-jerky it can get of an athlete who's starting to tighten up. Weiser, Jorgensen, and Dibba. Right and Locati. So there's our one, two, three right now. Schweitzer, Jorgensen, and Dimoff. Here are your top three on the front stretch with Carissa Schweitzer out front. Carissa Schweitzer out front with five to go. Schweitzer looks fresh. Meters remain. 78-1 on that lap. 78-9. Schweitzer, Jorgensen, Dimma. 32-01 pace right now. It's Alice Wright in New Mexico, Sharon Lopez. They're kind of narrowly running uh, on the inside of some of these athletes, Rachel trying Johnson. to pass them, and it's got to slow you down and a little bit. Out, and there's so many women in this field, it's impossible to avoid either. Dimoff actually now the moving are up. Still right at 32 flat it almost looked like she was about to pass Jorgensen. And she may still here. Starting to run on her shoulder, putting some pressure. Last lap was 78. See what we've got going here for the lead. And Schweizer just signaled to, to Jorgensen. So she's going to let them go. And Jorgensen down to the lead. Working very well together up front. Quinn Jorgensen now the leader. Give off. Yeah, but Dimoff now challenging ahead into second place. Uh, that's probably a smart move because when, when it went to Schweizer, they slowed down a bit. Well, now I wonder if Schweizer's going to hang on them. It looks like they're opening a gap a little bit. Uh, she's fading a bit. Jorgensen, Dimoff, and Schweitzer. And now you can kind of start to see that clenching. There is definitely a gap opening up between uh, Dimoff and Schweizer. And Schweizer dropping off. Dimoff now on the heels of Jorgensen. But Jorgensen looking very strong. Putting a bit of distance between themselves and Schweitzer. I mean, it probably is a little much to ask to have Schweizer keep pace with Jorgensen. Uh, you know, both coming at this 10K from very different angles. Schweizer ran a lot of middle distance races indoors. She ran 427 for the mile. Uh, set a collegiate record in the 3K. Seventy-six. Won the 5K on that indoors, lap. but you know even the 5K is half the distance of a 10K. And this Gwen is training for the marathon. Um, right and Locati, Rachel Johnson, Jorgensen pushing the pace. Jorgensen and Dimoff now Denver. breaking away. In third. And, and Jorgensen just looking stronger and stronger as this race continues. So she's on 32:02 pace right now through 8,800 meters. Gwen Jorgensen transitioning from the triathlon to the marathon and running very well on this 10K Invitational here at the Stanford Invite. The credit to Dimov, she has not fallen off whoever has been in the two spots ahead of her or one spot ahead of her. And she's right there with Jorgensen step for step.
She's letting Carrie Dimoff go ahead and set the pace. 800 meters to go for these women. Obviously, they're both sporting the Bowerman Track Club singlets, so they train together. And having a training partner in a, a time trial kind of race <laughs> like this, where you, you know you want to run fast, that just makes it a lot more comfortable. And they're on 32.01 pace right now, two laps remaining. Him off, and they continue to lap Schweitzer. competitors. Here at the 10,000 meter invitational for the women at the Stanford Invitational. Dimoff and Jorgensen. Gary Dimoff and Gwen Jorgensen battling up front. And they'll be coming to the bell. Here comes Dimoff, the bell lap. Dimoff still leading Jorgensen. What a race. Very impressive from Jorgensen. On that last lap for the leader. And Dimoff at this point. That was a 76 for Dimoff. They need to turn another 76 to run 32 flat. Gary Dimoff, and Dimoff and Gwen Jorgensen. Getting a little space between her and Jorgensen. We'll see if she can pull away. Or whether or not Jorgensen is waiting to make her move. 32 flat pace at the bell. So they, they have a good chance to get under if they can, you know, put in a little surge right here. 200 meters remaining. Carrie Dimoff leading Gwen Jorgensen. With 200 to go. And Dimoff might win this race. <laughs> Carrie Dimoff leading the field. Gwen Jorgensen running second. Carissa Oh, and here she comes. Jorgensen making the pass. Missouri. Running well in third. She powers into the lead here, into the back stretch. Gwen Jorgensen. And now she's Gwen moving fast. Wow, Jorgensen. what a run. <laughs> and she comes in under 32 by a long shot. Schweitzer right at 32 flat. Wow, even, even Schweitzer coming in right at, at 32 flat. That's, so, that's going to be an all-time top 10 performance collegiately. Imp impressive for Schweizer too, because it looked like she could have fallen off the pace a lot more, but she stuck with it. Definitely. I mean, that's tough. I mean, she had maybe still 800 meters to yeah. go, and she signaled to them to go ahead. 32 flat point 55 for Carissa Schweitzer, and that will put her in the, that's number nine on the all-time collegiate list in her 10K debut. So the Carissa ninth Schweitzer of Missouri. Best 10K time 55. for collegiate woman for Schweitzer in her 10K debut. She's got to be, I mean, she's obviously the most versatile four. runner in the yeah. NCAA right now. Uh, what a performance. You know, the other, it's almost, it was a litmus test, I think. I mean, I'll go try and talk to her in a moment, but uh, definitely a litmus test to see if maybe she can pull off that 5K, 10K double yeah. at Nationals Outdoors. And after this, I would definitely do it if I were her. I mean, the other collegiates in the field, uh, uh, Alice Wright, New Mexico, was 32.15, 15 seconds back. Sharon Locati of Kansas, 32.21. Uh, Paige Stoner of Syracuse, 32-23. So, a lot of really strong runs. And we see more of our competitors coming in to cross the line. All right, and I'm gonna try and grab a few interviews. All right, so we watch the official results or the unofficial official results, I should call them, as they make their way across. But again, Jorgensen with a very impressive performance. 
Get herself a win here at the Stanford Invitational. And fights are coming in with the ninth fastest time in collegiate history in her 10K debut. At this point, there's not much that she can't do. All right, coming up next, we're waiting for the men's 10,000 Invitational. While they get set up, we'll take a quick break.